the Browns dominated the Titans yesterday. And while I'm watching the game, I'm thinking about the narrative that was made before the game. People thought that the Browns were pretenders because they haven't had a real signature win. Their only great win was against the Colts. They got demolished by the Steelers. They got demolished by the Ravens. So I feel like this win was a statement win for the Browns. I mean, the Browns completely neutralized Derrick Henry. I know the Titans had to go away from the run because they had to come back at some point. But the Browns defense played well. Baker played an efficient game. And people forget, but the Titans blew out the Browns last year, week one. They beat them 43-13. to So I feel like this was kind of a revenge game for the Browns on the Titans. But while I'm watching this game, the Browns are now 9-3. and Last year, I believe they finished 6-10. and I'm thinking to myself, is Kevin Stefanski the coach of the year? Does he deserve to be the coach of the year? And that's a tough question for me because while I want to say yes, I can't. Because there's a guy over there in, in Miami, Florida, and Brian Flores, who took a team that none of us thought had playoff expectations. We didn't think the Dolphins were going to be in the playoff picture at all. And he took that team, and they're not only in the playoffs, but they have a chance to win their division. It's really hard for me to pick Kevin Stefanski over Brian Flores. You can see here, the Browns' offense was 22nd last year. They're 15th this year. But the Dolphins' offense was 25th last year, 16th this year. Their defense was 32nd, and they're second this year in points allowed. Brian Flores is a defensive coordinator. So they they made a 30-point jump in the rankings with Brian Flores from last year to this year. As bad as Freddie Kitchens was, and Kevin Stefanski is, of course, an upgrade, Brian Flores has made more of an impact on Miami thus far. The Browns had a talented roster. They underachieved last year, and this year, they're kind of doing what we expected them to do. Whereas the Dolphins, they're overachieving in everybody's eyes. And this is with an influx of quarterbacks. You start off the season with Fitzpatrick. Then you go to Tua. There's some drama around that. Then you switch back to Fitzpatrick because Tua had a thumb injury. Now you go back to Tua. I think Brian Flores has more of a case for, to, for, to be coach of the year over Kevin Stefanski. Even though I think if the, the, the award were to finish today, Kevin Stefanski would be second. Baker Mayfield, he had a great game yesterday, and there's kind of been this narrative that Baker has been bad all year. But in reality, he's been playing as good as he's been playing since his, his rookie year. I mean, last year he had 22 touchdowns and 21 interceptions. This year he has 21 touchdowns. He's about to go over his number from last year, and he has seven interceptions. Before this Titans game, Baker Mayfield hadn't turned the ball over in a month, and he didn't turn over the ball against the Titans. What Baker Mayfield needs to be for the Browns is efficient, not turn the ball over, and chew clock because their running game is so dominant. And that's what he's been so far. So whenever Baker has these bad moments, people want to criticize him for it to the point where when the Browns were doing good, nobody wanted to give Baker credit. But I think right now, people should be giving Baker more credit for how he's been performing. Because Baker, although he might not be the superstar, number one pick quarterback that a lot of people expected him to be, he's not a borderline starter. I think he's a really good quarterback. And not only that, but he's a really good leader. He's good for the locker room. And I feel like as a quarterback, if you don't have those other stuff, those physical tools, you're not as good as these other quarterbacks, you have to have leadership. You have to have something that other quarterbacks don't. And I think that Baker Mayfield has that. The Browns are currently 9-3, and three, and the remaining schedule is the Ravens, the Giants, the Jets, and the Steelers. So the Jets, of course, that's not a test at all. You have the Ravens and the Steelers, which both of those are tests because the Browns got blown out, and the Giants, their defense has been really good this season. I think the Titans was a statement win for the Browns. So was the Colts because they beat them earlier in the season. But I want to know what they do against a division rival like the Ravens or Steelers. The Ravens haven't been playing so so good. Can are they going to make it 
a fight against them, or are they going to get blown out like before? The Steelers, they almost lost to the Cowboys. They're, they, it's a close game with the Washington right now, and I believe last week it was a close game against the Ravens, and the Ravens, they're, almost all their team was injured. So the Steelers aren't playing their best football, even though they're undefeated. And now the Browns had a statement went over the Titans, but now the question is, are they going to do it again? Can they get a win against the Ravens or the Steelers? And I think ultimately that's how we're going to judge them on how far they can go in the playoffs.